Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. I hope you had a great weekend because it's gonna be a big news week for Raid Shadow Legends and we are kicking it off with the official preview, update preview of the Cursed City, the brand new bit of content that is coming this week. Let's dive in. I want to watch this with you. I've actually played a little bit of this as well on the test server, though I don't think I'm technically allowed to give any of that info away. Let's see. Let's see what they show in this video. Let's go. Hey there, Let's do everyone. It. Welcome back to another update preview video, where today we'll be showing off one of our biggest features to date, the Cursed City. The gates to oh, this accursed... It's not the Cursed City. It's the Cursed City. ...place, also known by the city's original name of Centranos, will be open soon. So let's find out what challenges await and the rewards you'll be reaping. First things first, Cursed City is a brand new game mode available to players of level 52 and above. The name isn't just for show either. You have an entire city to explore here. There's 100 stages. This is interesting. I will tell you right now that I have um, a preview video already recorded. I might actually just put it up almost raw of just my first initial reactions to everything and playing through like the the boss floors, the ascended stages. I'm sure you'll mention that here, etc. We'll, we'll talk about all that sort of stuff. Uh, one thing I don't have in that video is actually the rewards for each different stage. That's kind of cool to see what's uh, what's actually happening. So if I look at, for example, Copper Market right here, this first area, you're getting kind of typical small potiony type rewards for most of these stages. I believe these are new currency, uh, but we shall see. I think they've even shown up in game. I saw some people talking about that on Discord. We'll talk about it if he talks about it. Um, I'm pretty sure you can see these red things here are going to be mythical upgrades for the forge, stuff that you can use to forge mythical equipment. And yeah, some looks like some new gear sets in there. Silver, this key here from this boss uh, lets you get in to fight the final boss, etc. And I believe you got you can see at the top eight keys. So I think you can do eight different stages per day. There's 100 stages total, plus the one middle stage, the final boss. We looked at him uh, over the weekend. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's play again. Spread across four districts, with each district getting progressively harder to complete. There's new challenges and fiendish twists on old classics. Then there's the Eclipse Tower, yeah. home to Raid's newest boss. And the current <laughs> Lord of Centranos, Amius the Lunar Archon. In order to take on this moon-obsessed recluse, You'll need to unlock the path to him each month. One thing about that as well, we we did a quick breakdown of it. They did say in content creator chatter, someone said that he is not uh, susceptible to term meter control. I saw a few comments on that on my video. People spotted that in the boss description stuff. It didn't say that he was immune to turn meter. It really should. Hopefully they update that on time, but he is apparently fully immune to turn meter control. So you can't turn meter control him, stop him from doing anything. He is going to get his turns. So yeah. A new rotation of the Cursed City will begin, resetting your progress from the previous month. The stages of each district in the Cursed City will remain the same, but the requirements you'll need to beat them will change. We'll describe those later in the video. Entering stages of the Cursed City is similar to Doom Tower rooms, in that you'll need Cursed City keys. You'll get a so I'm liking this idea. Let me just mention that this monthly rotation and the requirements for stages will change. I believe that it is stuff like there's going to be, you need to bring in specific rarities of champions, specific affinities of champions, maybe only specific factions of champions to do each stage. So that's interesting. So the stages will stay the same. I guess the boss combinations and stuff will stay the same as well. Maybe the boss affinities, like that stuff won't, uh, won't change. You're still fighting exactly the same enemies and exactly the same stage, but you might have to be bringing in different champions uh, on each different month. Uh, which is, I think it's a pretty good change, right? Doom Tower, you kind of beat it and you're you're done in a sense. This should be a pretty interesting way because there's multiple paths through. Like, let's say you cannot beat a particular stage this month. Ah, oh, I don't have any Force Affinity High Elves or something like that. I don't know. Um, you can go a different way. You can skip that stage, come back to it later in the month. It's interesting. Set number of these each day, and they won't be spent unless you successfully complete the stage you're taking on. You can't buy these or stack them over multiple days, okay, so right. use them or lose them. Mm. The Cursed City has two difficulties, normal and hard. The default difficulty will be set to hard, but you can switch at any point. Cursed City keys aren't tied to either difficulty. Although you'll get enough keys to complete all stages in both difficulties, it would be prudent to plan your progress rather than switch around wildly. Oh, apparently if you hold click, it it <laughs> makes the video fast forward. I didn't actually know it did. Oh, that was weird. Um, 
Well, I was thinking was, right, if you're getting eight keys per day, 30 days, 240 keys, and you need 100 for each difficulty. So 200 to clear normal and hard together. You've got 40 spare keys. So you can miss like five days uh, if you want to clear absolutely every stage. Uh, but that's it, right? <laughs> if you miss more than five days, you're not going to fully clear every single uh, every single stage of both difficulties. I say the expectation going into it is probably like month one. It, it, I'd imagine it's going to be really, really hard to clear all of hard, like every single stage of hard the first time around, right? Uh, but it will obviously get easier with time as you build up your roster and you start adapting more to it and you're getting the rewards to help as well. Now, here comes the fun part. You can chart your own journey through the Cursed City. You always start in the District of Cobble Market, but the path you take from there is up to you. You can head straight for the biggest enemies you can find first, or indulge your inner completionist and try to clear every stage of a district before moving on. That's how it works. But it'd be a pretty short update preview video if we just left it there, right? The Cursed City... What I will say, my initial thoughts, by the way, on that is probably to try to go to the hardest stuff first, like go for the hard stuff first, so you figure out where you are stuck. You go, oh, I need to beat this boss, but I cannot beat this boss. You want to find that out early in the month? So that then you've got time to like wait for the next champion training or artifact enhancement or whatever to actually build up your champions and, and build up some teams to actually take it down, right? I think if you clear all the easy stuff first, you could get, then get really hard blocked with not much time to fix it. It's split into four districts. Cobble Market, Dead Rise, Plague Home, and Soul Cross, with each district getting progressively harder. You're eased into the horrors of the Cursed City through Cobble Market. Dead Rise and Plague Home are where the difficulty climbs slightly, and Soul Cross, well, Soul Cross is the stuff nightmares are made of. Ha! Each district okay. has exactly 25 stages, and that number won't change between rotations. The other thing that won't change is the position of individual stages on the map, or the paths that connect them. Urban redevelopment is not high up on Amius' list of priorities. Each stage within the districts can be one of four types. Regular, boss, double boss, or awakening. Let's run through them one by one. Regular stages are your standard run-of-the-mill battles and raid, like you'd find in the campaign. You'll fight across three rounds with a wave of enemies in each round. You've faced these types of battles hundreds of times before, but the ones found in the Cursed City might be a little more difficult than you're used to. Next up, we've got Awakened Stages. As the name implies, you'll need to bring your Awakened Champions to take on these stages. Each Awakened Stage requires a certain number of Awakening levels across your whole team, indicated by red stars on a champion's portrait. So, if an Awakened Stage requires six red stars, you could bring one champion with six red stars on their portrait, or two champions with three red stars, and so on. Once the requirement... I will tell you right now as well, I think the stuff they showed there was everything that I think I've seen so far as well. I think five for Cobble Market, five Awakening Stars for the three Awakened Stages. Uh, for the Middle Districts, it's 10 Awakening Stars. And then for Soul Cross, the really hard one, it's 20 Awakened Stars. Uh, where it becomes difficult is because you've got restrictions, right? That's where the challenge comes in. Like, it's not too hard to get, let's say, let's go back here. It's not too hard in theory to bring a team with 20 stars but when it's a really difficult stage and you can see here you're restricted to void or magic affinities only to hp and support champs only they can be epic legendary mythical like you can't bring in rares right you can't bring in attack champs you can't bring in force or spirit affinity that's where it becomes much more difficult so like just i, I can tell you initially like there were definitely some stages i was like oh i actually physically can't even start the stage because i don't have enough awakening on them now there's only three of those uh, in each district, and like the the hardest ones, the ones that need twenty stars, are obviously the ones in uh, Soul Cross. Uh, but yeah, if you want to clear everything, that's going to be tough. Uh, but you don't have to clear them. I think that is important. They are optional stages, uh, but you obviously red want to beat them for the rewards. So, so, if an awakened stages requires <clears throat> six red stars, you could bring one champion with six red stars on their portrait, or two champions with three red stars, and so on. Like f five stars, for example, in Cobble Market, that should be pretty easy to do, you know? The requirement has been met. You can then focus on filling out your team with the best champions for the job. Completing Awakened Stages isn't necessary to get to Amius the Lunar Archon. They can offer an alternative route, though, and give you some pretty sweet rewards when completing them for the first time. Moving on. We've got boss stages. Yeah, like Here, that, those were taking it was decent rewards there, but like it's not something you're going to 
rewards when completing like your account will never recover from having 15 rarity charms and six mythical charms those are really great things to get like that's really good but you can live without them you know for the first time so. moving on we've got boss stages here you'll be taking on some of Teleria's most famous foes iron twins like the iron <laughs> twins of Aonime, the sand devil a quick glimpse at the cursed city map reveals that these boss stages <clears throat> are often located at key landmarks like bridges between districts or paths leading to the next kind of stage, Devil Boss. Now, I will tell you, they show the two, two of the hardest ones, uh, Iron Twins. That's pretty rough. And like, there's no Geomancer potentially, right? If Dwarves are not one of the factions allowed for the stage, there's no Geomancer. Uh, like here, Dwarves are allowed, but maybe only Legendaries or something like that, right? They don't have a Geomancer in the team. So that makes it hard. I think Iron Twins, that's going to be challenging, but doable. Oh, man, Sand Devil, though, is going to be absolutely brutal. Uh, they are going to be lower level than, like, the max. It's not going to be as tough as the dungeons because you got restrictions, I believe, from what I can tell. But, my God, like, how are you going to beat Sand Devil? <laughs> that's going to be really hard, you know, without Boss. very specific yep. teams. That's right. The bad guys are teaming up. There are 12 double boss stages in total, with three popping up in each district. The location of the double boss stages in each rotation of the Cursed City will always be the same. You'll also find that the boss duos will scale with each district's difficulty. So don't worry about walking into Cobble Market and facing off against Astronix the Dark Fae immediately. You'll need to clear these double boss stages in order to get Eclipse Keys. Collecting three Eclipse Keys will grant you passage into the Eclipse Tower at the center of the Cursed City and let you take on Amy as the Lunar Archon. We'll release a separate video talking about that I mean, again, you can see here, this is going to be, this is going to be tough, right? To fight Amius. <laughs> you can only use champions from these five factions. That's it. Uh, they might, and again, these conditions are all subject to change. Who knows what they're going to do every single month? Who knows if this is going to be the exact thing it's going to launch with? I assume it might be, right? But wow. How do we build a team to take them on with this? Like you guys saw how intense that boss looked. So it could be tough. So I kind of feel like that in terms of hard for the first month, it, Maybe not going to feel too bad if you can't clear everything. And like, oh man, I can't beat one of these, some of these really tough stages. I can't even get to Amius. I don't know. Maybe Amius is going to fall over. Maybe he'll be super easy. I'm imagining he's going to be designed to be extremely difficult. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> even if you don't get all three keys and get to Amius, might not be the end of the world. Right. Month but one. Now, Month two would be like, yeah, I want to get there. there. One thing you do, you can get Oella here, right? That could be pretty big. You could also get like increased accuracy champs, like good ones, like Razzlevark's a good one. You know, like Elva's in there. Like that's a good, that's a strong trio right there of lots of damage, lots of speed, decreased speed if you want it. Uh, and potentially building loads of resistance to resist the buff strips there. and stuff. Each so. of the three Eclipse Keys can be found in <clears> one <throat> of the double boss stages in Cobble Market, Dead Rise, and Plague Home. The location of the Eclipse Key within each district will also change with each rotation and will always be random, but you'll see it in the stage rewards. Knowing about oh, okay. the types That's of cool. stages is helpful, but it's not quite that simple in Cursed City. Every single stage, including boss stages, will have a number of restrictions on the champions you can bring. Think of Doom Tower secret rooms and you'll get the general idea. Some will restrict which rarity of champion you can bring, or perhaps which affinity, type, or faction. Some of these restrictions are unique to the hard difficulty, however, and you won't have to worry about oh. them on normal. Oh, these cool. unique stage restrictions will change with every rotation, so don't expect to be able to rely on the same path. You'll have to change up how you traverse the districts. All right, we've got... I, I think that's that's probably something... It's probably going to be very frustrating to people. Like, some people are going to love this, and some people are going to hate it. For me, I love it, right? I think that's great. Um... You know, it's like Doom Tower secret rooms. They always stay the same. It was always the sort of thing I thought, these seem like the sort of thing that are supposed to change. <laughs> like, it's a bit weird. Um, I love this idea that, okay, how am I going to beat, like, I don't know, this Frost Spider this month over here? How am I going to beat that? Uh, it's going to be an interesting puzzle. Like, every single month is going to be different. Like, rarities, different factions, etc. in there. It gives a lot of champions a chance to shine, right? There's loads of champions where you're like, ah, that champion, they're a decent support, you know, but I don't really need to use them. They're like a B tier support. They suddenly become much better. I, like, for instance, like this might change how you look at this new fusion, right? The Christmas fusion. Is he going to be good or not? 
he could be actually pretty good if you're not able to use any of your good champions from other factions you might be going like oh i need to take on the frost spider actually this dude who's immune to frost and is keeping my team alive he might actually be pretty good here or you know against bommel maybe he's going to be okay against bommel or okay against hard fire knight maybe newt is not going to be allowed against bommel in a rotation here but maybe ogren's are maybe that fusion is going to become more impactful so that's what's exciting to me is that suddenly there's tons of champions in this game that are barely average they're not that they're not top tier and let's be honest in most content if a champion is not top tier you're not gonna you know use them very much you know and certainly paying players paying players they're they're there to buy the best and they don't want anything else suddenly this expands the champions you're going to use a ton which is something I personally absolutely love. It's one of my favorite things about this game. So I'm really excited for that. Here. So quick recap. You have a full month to explore the Cursed City. Find the Eclipse Keys from Double Boss Stages and storm the Eclipse Tower to defeat Amius the Lunar Archon. How you weave your way through the streets of Centranos is up to you. Now let's get on to quests and rewards. As you're exploring the Cursed City, there are dedicated Cursed City quests for you to complete. They're pretty simple. Things like complete a specific number of stages, complete awakened stages, defeat Amius himself, you get the gist. Yeah, again, these are very basic. From what I've seen, they're super basic. It is basically just beat the stages. That's it. Um, so yeah, it looks like these are not going to really change up or be interesting or like have any particular challenges. Or it, the, the quests are very simple. Each Cursed City quest you complete will earn you Cursed Candles. Collect enough candles and you can earn rewards. Clearing stages of the Cursed City on hard difficulty will grant you occult Cursed Candles, as well as access to a unique chain of one-time rewards, including a mythical champion, Carnage the Anarch. This ancient demon spawn is a living avatar of chaos and is the one responsible we just point out his attack it's all 1960 <laughs> for the evil plaguing centranos so he'll be sure to bring some firepower to your champion collection you'll need a couple of successful visits through centranos to get enough occult cursed candles to acquire carnage though so be sure to check in daily and use those cursed city keys you want more I've heard if you actually say occult cursed candles 100 times in the mirror really, really fast, you actually get this champion for free just instantly in game. You don't have to do any of this. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was a nice like a uh, little bit, a little Easter egg in there for them. It's cool. We've got more. Even after you've claimed all of the one time rewards, completing cursed city quests will give you cursed chests. These contain a variety of useful treasures, including mythical, mythical chaos skill or... tomes and souls to awaken carnage. As if all this is huge, right? Like you could potentially get portrait is nice, but man, three, four, five, six star perfect soul for him in there, potentially. I'm guessing now I look at it and that it's a random like this wasn't clear to me, but the fact that it is a chest and it's it's random. Um probably the chances to drop those perfect souls are absolutely minuscule. But yeah, mythical chaos or that's pretty fun. That's cool. Reroll mythical gear. Treasures, like that. Including mythical skill tomes and souls to awaken carnage. Just to As make if mythical all that wasn't wasn't enough mythical. for you. There are also one time rewards when you beat a stage for the first time, similar to the Doom Tower. They'll also reset with each rotation. Rewards differ on normal and hard difficulty and they'll become more valuable as you progress through the districts. All stages will drop rewards, but the best stuff is saved for those brave or foolish enough to take on double boss stages. Some of the rewards will include Cursed Remnants, which you can collect to summon epic- Whoa, 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 go back. I actually have not seen this yet. Epic and Mythical Champions. Let's play it. There's second. also a new type of charm for crafting mythical artifacts in the forge, which can be used on, on double boss- <clears throat> So first of all, there are new gear sets, I, I think. I'm not sure if they're going to show them in this video, and I don't know if I can talk about them, but they're insane. I'll say that. They are crazy. So it looks like, for example, this boss is dropping accessories. So that's actually kind of cool, right? That you can sort of target accessories from the bosses. Another thing, I don't think it's been super clear here, but my understanding is that there's no farming of these stages. Like Doom Tower, you have to farm it, and that's kind of tedious. They've made it better with super raids, but it still kind of it takes time, right? I don't believe there's any farming with this. It's just you beat the stage once and you're done. Um, so I think that makes it m m interesting as well, right? That you could potentially go in and like manual the stage or something. You got a whole month to do it. Um, I think certainly the easier stages are going to be super easy, right? The, the early stages will be, you just absolutely smash through them with absolutely no trouble, uh, I think. 
But yeah, for the really hard stages, it's like, oh, I can manual it, I can beat it once, and I'm done. Sort of like with Doom Tower, in a sense, uh, which again resets every month. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. Let's, stages. Let me take a look at this. Some of the Wait, let me move. Uh, let me turn me off here. Hang on. Rewards will include cursed. Yeah, these cursed remnants. remnants which you what is this? Collect cursed remnants from the cursed city on a hard to summon epic and mythical champs. Ooh, epic and mythical only. So no legendaries, no rares. Epic. 82.5. Void Epic 15. Ooh. Mythical 2.5. Hmm. So basically, I mean, it's like a 17.5% chance to get something that's pretty decent for most people. Again, it's mostly about the mythicals. You need a 100. Doesn't look like you get that many. Actually, it, it looks like you get two summons per month. Am I wrong about that? So it's only from hard. 100 of them drop from Amius. So Amius gives you one summon. And then, yeah, there's 100 if you combine every other area. That's it. That's, uh, it just seems pretty low, right? <laughs> Man, like, you clear out the whole cursed city on hard, you get two summons. You get two, 2.5% chances for a mythical every month. I mean, you could play for the whole year and not get anything. You could get, you could play for a whole year and get a whole bunch of epics, right? I don't know. Can collect to summon epic and mythical champions. There's also a new type of charm for mm. crafting mythical artifacts in the forge, which can be used on any artifact set. You may also earn cursed chests like from some stages, and these can contain gear from two new artifact sets. Let's take a look at what they can do. Cool. Introducing the supersonic and merciless gear sets. They are variable gear sets, meaning you get new bonuses for each artifact or accessory equipped. So it's like, it's like protection and stone skin, right? There's nine pieces and you get, yeah, the more pieces you wear, the more bonuses you get. All the way up to a maximum of nine pieces. First up, we have the supersonic set. Need your champions to go fast. This is the set for you. It offers boost to HP and resistance, as well as a massive increase to speed. Okay, hang on, let's remove me for a second here as well. So you've got a nine piece set with nine pieces, you're getting 32% speed. That's a total, right? That's a huge amount of speed. You're getting some resistance and HP. You're getting 2% turn meter per buff placed by enemies. You're getting minus 30% to reduce turn meter effects on you and plus 30% to increase turn meter effects. So like in terms of going fast, this is the new fastest set, right? Protection was, I think that the fastest set realistically especially when you factor in mythical um i think protection was most likely going to be your fastest set uh you know similar i guess similar to speed but like yeah this one's going to be kind of nuts right it's again slightly slightly less uh speed but you're getting the extra turn meter you're getting extra yeah just lots of extra turn meter bonuses so this is pretty nice set pretty good but, but the wait. <laughs> real bonuses from this set include chances to manipulate your turn meter when equipped with four six or nine pieces you can see these bonuses on screen now. Put it on champions you need to be fast, and they'll be zooming. The second gear set is Merciless. This is perfect for damage dealers who are laser focused on wiping out their enemies in a single strike. It increases the wearer's attack, critical damage, and speed. It's like, <laughs> this set is absolutely crazy, guys. Check it out. 25% attack, 30% crit damage, 10% speed, 30 five percent ignore defense so right now with a four set savage or lethal you get 25 percent you add on a two piece of cruel you can go up to 30 percent this is more ignore defense than it is possible to get with any other set on top of that 30 percent chance to reduce a random skills cooldown um i i think that's whenever you, you take a turn i think plus a 15 percent chance to get an extra turn whenever you deal damage <laughs> this set is absolutely crazy it is like it's sort of like a relentless set a reflex set a savage and a cruel set plus a bunch of stats all rolled together like this set is absolutely nuts i think this is like their big sort of seller right they know how much savage means to people how hard people farm fire knight for savage how people farm doom tower for lethal they're like merciless this is the next step <laughs> this is the next evolution this is the new mo most powerful damage dealing set in the game by by miles i mean there could be some downsides to breaking some speed tunes but dear lord this thing is going to do so much damage damage and speed as well as offering a little bit of ignore defense for good measure a little There's bit also chances to reduce cooldowns and gain extra turns with the bonuses for either having four or nine pieces equipped which you can see on your screen now Whew. 
I believe that's everything. We hope you're as excited as we are to dive into everything that the Cursed City has to offer. Keep your eyes peeled for another video coming soon, where we'll talk more about the big bad boss of the Cursed City, Amius the Lunar Archon. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the awesome well, things coming to Raid. There you go, guys. What do you think about that? There's a lot of stuff in there. Again, I have a, a gameplay video on this coming out in the next couple of days, I think. Uh, so you guys will see my first gameplay. There's like, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to think about it. I might just put it up raw, like I said. Um, and you guys can enjoy watching it. You will already know more about it than I will going into it. And you'll sort of see me discovering a lot of this sort of stuff as we go. But uh, yeah, I'm honestly pretty intrigued by this. The rewards seem pretty juicy. Like the gear sets are very, very, very juicy. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I, th I think it's going to be a, a big challenge every month. To use champions you haven't used before. Uh, I was mentioning this. I, I tried to mention this in a very roundabout way, so I wouldn't uh, breach any embargo. <laughs> I, I think I did it properly. I, I'm always very careful with that stuff. But um, on the the fusion review, I said, "Man, this guy he looks pretty terrible. Could be good for the new content, but like he really doesn't look particularly good." And I think that is the case, right? This new fusion, the Christmas fusion, he's not particularly good, but. When you imagine that you could be going in with a lot of restrictions in terms of the champions that you can use, I could easily imagine, like, you know, like it's easy to look at it and go, like, why would I ever use this whatever freezer? I don't even know what he's called, this abominable snowman guy. Uh, why would I ever use him when I can use Newt against Fire Knight Hard? It just doesn't make any sense, right? Newt is so much better. What if you can't use Newt? What if you got to take on Fire Knight Hard in the Cursed City? Dwarves not allowed. But Ogren are certainly right. Uh, that that's what's really intriguing to me about this, and and it changing every month. So yeah, lots of lots of champions I think you've never used before are certainly going to be pretty good, which is always I think that's fun to see. So we'll see what we make of it. But yeah, so take your paths through it. Eight keys per day. Let me know what you guys think about that as well. The restrictions on the stages. I think people won't like awakening stages. I don't really like those. There's not that many of them, thankfully, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'll admit, I'm bloody scared of Sand Devil. <laughs> I am scared of Sand Devil. And these gear sets look insane. All right, I'll see you guys soon for more news. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.